Okay, hey everyone. Uh, this is the muon lifetime experiment. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the equipment with you so you can understand how we've gathered the data and how you're supposed to be processing it to understand the decay lifetime of muons. So we're going to start with a big silver thing in the corner and that is our scintillator. So it's going to emit a flash of light whenever a charged particle goes through it. Uh, and it also will emit a flash of light whenever a particle decays inside it. So whenever a muon decays. So we're going to be using this device to detect our muons and also to detect the little flashes that occur after they arrive in the scintillator and decay. Now on top of the uh, scintillator is the photomultiplier tube. It's a uh, high voltage device that is going to amplify the tiny, tiny signal that we get from the scintillator into something that can actually be sensed. Now it's powered by around 800 volts, so it is uh, a bit dangerous as, as these systems always are, but we've set it up for you so there's nothing you need to worry about in terms of safety or in terms of overloading the equipment. Now in front of the scintillator we have two important devices. The one on the left hand side is the discriminator and output detector. So this is going to be taking the output from the photomultiplier tube and it's going to be discriminating or removing certain pulses that aren't up to a certain voltage. Now you can tune that voltage down here with a little knob and I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, but what this device does is it first of all filters out any low energy peaks that we don't expect to see or any peaks that don't have a high voltage and it also converts these pulses into a TTL format, so into a square wave format. And this is useful because we're going to be using a computer to count these pulses and to time the difference between them and so they need to be in a format that's compatible with computers. So on the right hand side is an oscilloscope. We're just going to be using this to visualize some of the pulses we'll be taking a look at. Uh, we can see the difference between the analog and the digital pulses but I'll zoom in and show you that a little bit later. And finally we have this computer here. So this is going to be gathering all of our data. It's going to be counting all of the pulses or all of the sequences where there is a pulse a break and then another pulse and we're going to be using this to display some of the uh, statistics of our muon decay. Now the predominant aim of this lab is for you to do a lot of the statistical data processing. I'll be providing you with data that you've already that has already been gathered here and you're going to be using that data to determine the decay lifetime of the muons but also to answer a few questions like what kind of noise levels are appropriate, how much should we set the discriminator threshold to be, etc. So this is our discriminator, detector and oscilloscope setup and I'm just going to show you a couple of important things so you can understand how the experiment works. First of all, on the right hand side we have our oscilloscope and we have two different traces here. The yellow trace is the raw output from the photomultiplier tube and the blue trace is the square wave that's been generated by the detector in response to this pulse. So we can see here that it's making a nice little square wave which is very countable in a digital system whereas this pulse is probably not going to be very good at being measured by our FPGA which is inside the muon detector. Now secondly on the muon detector we have over here our threshold voltage or our control. If you tune this it's going to change the voltages that are allowed to pass and become a digital source. So as you can see, as I start to change it, some of the uh, pulses that we're seeing on the oscilloscope are changing as well. And that's because we're getting a lot of different pulses once I reduce the threshold down a lot. So over here we have our computer program, which is going to be interfacing with the muon detector. Now this computer program reads in the time difference between successive muon pulses which is assumed to be the time between the muon arriving in the scintillator and then decaying emitting another spark. That was good. Is this recording? Yes. Okay. So this is the software we're going to be using to calculate the muon lifetime and this is the software that's going to be generating the data that you're going to be using at home. Now what this software does is it reads in every single instance when a pulse was followed by a second pulse within 20 microseconds of one another. Now the program assumes that those two pulse sequences correspond to a muon arriving and a muon decaying, so a muon decay event.
Now, statistically, those muon decay events should be biased towards a separation of around 0 to 1 microseconds, i.e. the muon should arrive and then almost immediately decay. It'll be very rare that we get a muon arriving and then waiting for a whole 10 microseconds or so and then promptly decaying. So what we should expect is this data set will eventually approximate an exponential. I've had it running for about three minutes now, and you can see I've got a total of 10 events, which is not really a good level for fitting an exponential curve. So we're gonna be running this experiment overnight and providing data for you to do your statistical fits. So even when this experiment was running in real life, the important part of the experiment wasn't actually the data collection, it was the data processing. So this experiment involves a lot of statistics and you're gonna to have to do a lot of it to understand what the true muon decay rate is and approximately how much of our data is going to be useful data and how much of the data can really only be attributed to noise. Please have a read through of the associated information packet. Make sure that you understand what statistical methods we're gonna be using and make sure you can do the pre-lab questions because these are actually quite important to your ability to conduct the laboratory.